Indian market, it's not at all easy for NRIs, especially for those who are residing in Canada and US. US investors facing additional critical challenges of PFIC or Passive Foreign Investment Company Regulation Reporting Requirements. FATCA compliance in United States and similar regulations in Canada, they create intricate reporting obligations for Indian financial institutions. All mutual fund houses, they don't allow NRIs from US and Canada. Most of the NRIs from US and Canada, they started believing in Indian story and they want to be part of economic surge of India. Indian markets due to FII's full out recently has crashed a bit but everyone knows that this phase is temporary and this had not deterred NRIs and they are showing great interest to invest in India, build their position in India. But investing in Indian market, it's not at all easy for NRIs, especially for those who are residing in Canada and US, they have a lot of hurdles in investing in India when it comes to regulation, compliances, as well as taxes. They may have to navigate specific rules, which are quite complex, such as FATCA, PFIC compliance, as well as particular tax reporting requirements. But don't worry, it may look like daunting task, but with the right guidance and understanding, it's absolutely manageable. This is exactly why I'm here with this video to break down this for you. In this video, I'm going to explain everything that you need to know about mutual fund investing from US and Canada. So stay tuned till the end. channel, I'm CS Kirtana, I run the consultancy, a firm which is specialized in NRI services. Based in Dubai, we offer NRI investing, finance, tax and FMR services. If you are interested to avail any of our services, feel free to book an appointment through www.kirtisfinfo.com or contact this number through WhatsApp. I've completed my CS from India and SEMA strategic level from UK. I'm also a sub-registered OSS MFT. Every week I bring an explainer video related to various NRI topics in this channel. If you are looking for finance and investment, tax or FMR related topics, please consider subscribing this channel. In today's video, let's first understand why investing in Indian mutual funds makes sense for NRIs. Some NRIs, they make superficial analysis of economy and stock market and think that only US market will do better than Indian markets. I do believe in US market that will do good, but in only one sector that is technology. There is no doubt with AI, artificial intelligence wave sweeping across the world in different sectors, tech companies are going to do extremely well and US tech companies will be doing very well. That's why even in our personal portfolio, we have around 30% uh, invested in US tech stocks. But Indian stock market is also witnessing growth across multiple different sectors. If you want investment diversification across the sectors or economies, then you just can't ignore Indian markets. It's providing huge opportunities in technological services, healthcare, defense, infrastructure, consumer goods, consumption. It enables investors to capitalize on India's most dynamic economic segments. If you want to play this theme, then individual stock picking is not at all easy. So mutual fund is the easiest way or effective route where you can manage the risk and get very good return. Having specific stocks in US market and mutual fund portfolio in India, you can actually have a very good balanced portfolio which combines the stability of the developed market with the higher growth potential of India's emerging market dynamics. But investing process for NRS, especially from India and Canada, is not at all easy. The regulatory requirement or compliance reporting requirements for US and Canadian NRIs in Indian mutual funds is marked by a complex set of compliance requirements, with US investors facing additional critical challenges of PFIC or Passive Foreign Investment Company Regulation Reporting Requirements FATCA compliance in United States and similar regulations in Canada, they create intricate reporting obligations for Indian financial institutions, leading to, you know, many mutual fund com companies, they are actually hesitant about accepting investors from these countries. So, this PFIC rules particularly impact only US-based NRIs, not Canada, as Indian mutual funds are typically classified in US as PFICs, 
subjecting investors to complex tax reporting requirements potentially harshest tax treatment also including higher tax rate on the gains and interest charges on the deferred taxes these regulatory hurdles have significantly impacted the investment accessibility and tax efficiency for us and canadian nris investing in indian mutual funds many indian mutual fund companies they actually opt out of accepting investments from these countries just to avoid the compliance burden associated with this fatca Canada's Common Reporting Standards or CRS, as well as the PFIC reporting requirements for US NRIs, especially the PFIC classification, it can result in substantial tax complication, requiring detailed annual reporting through Form Number Eight Six Two One, potentially eliminating the tax advantages typically associated with the long-term capital gain. In this case, then why do uh, any NRI will consider this, right? So this regulatory environment combined with extensive documentation requirements and complex onboarding procedures, these three, they create more challenging investment landscape for these NRIs compared to other NRIs or their counterparts in the region such as Europe, Middle East, Southeast Asia. But if you are an NRI from US, don't worry. If you are really interested to invest in Indian mutual funds, we can guide you with all requirements. Visit our website www.keerthisinfo.com and book a free appointment for online meeting with me. You can contact us through the WhatsApp number by messaging or the link available in the description. The taxation framework for NRI mutual fund investors from US and Canada, they encourage Compass multiple layers of complexity across different jurisdictions. Mutual fund investing has tax implication in both the countries, India as well as in the country of uh, residence, whether it is Canada or US. So let's first understand Indian taxation. In India, the tax structure distinguishes between equity and debt mutual funds. With equity funds are subjected to 20% tax on the short-term gains if they are holding period is above 12 months and 12.5%. 5% over and above 1 lakh rupees of gains. And for the debt funds, they have different holding period requirements and the tax rate. Additionally, dividend income is also taxed at individual slab rate with 20% TDS for NRIs. What about US or Canada? So let's take up US. US-based NRIs face particularly challenging tax implications due to PFIC. I already considered that IRS considers Indian mutual funds as passive income producing entities. So PFIC regulations are applicable. These rules can result in harsh taxation and complex reporting requirement where you have to file form number 8621 for or at the end of each financial year and potentially FBIR reporting obligations also. The default taxation method under this section can result in higher tax rates and interest charges on the deferred taxes. So while alternative method like QEF or mark to market elections are rarely practical for Indian mutual fund investments. And if you want to know more details about PFIC, I have made a detailed video in YouTube regarding the concept of PFIC and how the reporting has to be done. You can watch it using the link here. Now, if you are an NRI based in Canada, then you will encounter relatively more straightforward but still complex system where investment gains are typically treated as capital gains with 50% taxability at marginal rates. They must maintain detailed record in Canadian dollars and comply with some foreign income verification requirement through foreign investments when the investment exceeds Canadian dollar 100,000. The reporting obligations include tracking maximum cost amounts, year end values, income received and gains or losses from the dispositions. But both US and Canadian NRIs can leverage double taxation avoidance agreement with India in order to minimize their tax burden. Though this this mechanism differ between the countries. US investors utilize Form 1116 for foreign tax credits while Canadian investors use other forms. The complexity of cross-border taxation necessitates professional guidance and meticulous record keeping, including the documentation of all transactions, tax payments and currency conversions. If you are investing in India, regular consultation with tax experts familiar with this multiple jurisdiction is going to help you in maintaining the compliance as well as optimizing the return by making it tax efficient. If you're planning to start your investment in India, 
you need to understand indian mutual funds they follow a structured approach centered around a specific account requirements and compliance procedures the foundation of this process is mandatory maintenance of either it is nra non resident external or nro non resident ordinary bank account so you need to have either of this through which all the mutual fund transactions must be routed to ensure regulatory compliance these accounts serve as the primary channel for investment activities and the very essential for maintaining the transparent financial records all nra investors they must complete comprehensive kyc formalities so it is one time process and it is done to avoid any kind of you know money laundering activities so this requires standard documentation such as um, your visa details overseas address proof pan passport copies and other uh, tin or tax identification numbers etc however us and canadian residents they face additional compliance requirement because they have mandatory fatca and crs declaration also adding an extra layer of complexity to the investment process and all the mutual fund houses which agree to accept the investors from here they need additional declaration the procedure may differ with the fund houses but it is required so sending a physical copy through courier which makes execution really difficult in the first stage once you do this things become easy investment execution can be facilitated through multiple channels maybe you know direct investment with the fund houses or online platforms which provides actually flexibility in managing the mutual fund portfolios despite the non residential status but all mutual fund houses they don't allow nris from us and canada only few of them offer the services such as uh, to name them uh, few of the fund houses are icici that's one of the largest fund houses of course and maintain comprehensive portfolio of equity debt and hybrid funds accessible to nra investors even hdfc mutual fund similarly they also offer extensive investment options with some streamlined compliance procedures even sbi uti aditya birla and uh, tata parag parek sundaram nippon these are the major players they actually accept investors from us and canada and also offer assistance in navigating all the stringent regulatory requirement but the procedure may differ with all the mutual fund houses for example uh, motilal oswal they do not accept sip but they do accept the lump sum and the declarations which are taken in each fund of the houses they differ how are they going to take the first sip that is also differing so before you commence your investing journey in indian mutual fund ensure that you either know the rules well you contact the fund houses and get all the documents which are required for onboarding otherwise you have to take the guidance or the professional expertise of the financial advisor who is familiar with this as i already told you in the first part of this video we from the consultancy can help you invest in indian equity through mutual funds assist you in your goal based planning as well as navigating all taxation and compliance requirements if you are nri from us and canada and interested to invest in indian mutual fund don't hesitate to contact us we will try to help you as much as possible so that's it for today see you with another interesting video next week till then bye bye